Hi YouTube, this is Jilly. I wanted to show how I start a painting in the way that I like to do it. Now, there are a million different ways that you can start a painting, but this is my method and I'm going to teach this particular method today. So, what I have mentioned before is that I've taken lots of drawing classes over the years and that my mentor has said to me that drawing is a good way to be able to paint. And I've actually known painters that don't have a drawing experience and they are very, very fine and wonderful painters. So I think it's different for everyone, but I think for me, having some drawing experience has definitely helped with the way that I paint. So I have a canvas here, it's a small one, it's a five by seven. And what I like to do when I have a canvas is I like to write on the back the size of the canvas because lots of times if it's drying or somebody wants to know about uh, what size it is, sometimes I'll forget what size the canvas is. So today I'm showing that that's usually the first thing I do. I uh, unwrap the canvas and there's usually the dimensions on the outside. So today I'm going to be doing another B and I love bees and I have looked at many pictures of bees and I thought it was kind of interesting because I'm doing some cleaning up and organizing and I found some bee sketches that I had done probably about six months ago and I thought I would show them. So this is a process that I have sketching bees, learning how the body of this particular type of bee is shaped, uh, the queen bee, and people uh, around me know a lot more about bees than I do, so they probably would know the different types of bees and intricacies, but I was really kind of uh, loving the crown on the bee. Maybe I'll do that today. And then here's a, I think this is watercolor. Uh, and some metallics. You can see the metallics on it, but that's on really nice watercolor paper. I also learned too that the better the watercolor paper, the better the painting comes out, especially if you're using watercolor. But I use a lot of different things. I'll use some acrylic, some coffee, and then I have this bee painting, which was my dandelion gone wrong, and then I changed it into a bee. So uh, I think it's kind of cool. But what I will do is go back to my sketching that I've done. And also uh, to keep artwork original, it's good to come up with your own sketches that aren't a copy uh, of, of, of somebody else's work that you've seen. It's really good to make it your own. So I'll look at my blank canvas, think about where I want to place my B and I'm holding the camera, so it's a little bit awkward because I'm holding my phone up and I'm drawing at the same time, but let's see what I can do. So I have a black ballpoint pen, that's what I like to start with. I used to try charcoal or pencil, and what would happen is I would find it would run into my paint a lot, and the ballpoint pen, it seems to kind of disappear within the paint. Um, and probably somebody that was that was uh, teaching an art class would probably say, no, don't do that, but that's the way I do it. So if somebody wants to try my method or a different method, that's fine too. I'm always very careful about suggesting things because if it doesn't work for somebody, then that's, I don't really want people to not want to paint because I'm, showing them a certain way that I do it. But see, I'm making the crown and I'm just really, I'm, I'm free handing it. I'm not going crazy. I'm not making it perfect, but you can see, I'm almost kind of just scribbling it on the, the quickness of the crown. And usually what I'll do is I'll keep my sketch around and then when I'm painting it in, I'll go back and look at that original sketch like I had made three points of gems in the crown and a big one on the top. Um, and so I'll go back and kind of mess around with that. And I love making a nice shiny gold crown. And this is a five by seven canvas, like I said, so it's a little bit smaller. So what I'll do is I ha you have to make room for the antennae of the bee, right? And then it has its head. 
And the more you draw a B, the better you get the next time that you draw one because you have you have mind memory. You remember, oh, that's the, the shape of the head. This is the shape of the body. Then you go down into the lower part of the B body. And there's all different kinds of things you can do. The wings kind of extend out in a beautiful way. Um, and I'm not doing something so that it's an exact, exact replica of a bee. I'm doing almost more of like an abstract version of what I think a bee looks like. But that's part of the fun of it too, is you don't have to be, there are people I know that do drawings that are lifelike, that have exact dimensions. Uh, I actually know somebody who does some architecture type work and it's really different to see them at work uh, using a ruler and measuring and having blueprints and stuff. So this is really like on the other scale of things of just letting that imagination soar. But like I said yesterday, you want to get those dimensions down so that when someone looks at it, they're like, oh, that's a B. And I've done also a number of abstract paintings uh, back in like 2011, I think it was. And I had some very abstract pieces I was doing in oils. And the imagination would soar because sometimes I would be painting and I would see like an image of a bee in something. And then I would uh, have someone look at the painting and they would see something completely different. So I think sometimes when you're doing abstract art too, it's really uh, up to the person who's looking at it. But when you're doing something like a bee and you want to stay in a certain color scheme or do something, it is nice to get those proportional dimensions of what a bee looks like. So that's really how I start. And then um, I might step back from it for a minute um, because I'm doing this while I'm filming. I'm looking through my phone and I'm holding the phone over it, which, you know, I'm getting much better at, at doing that. But I'll step back from it, go and do something for a little while, uh, maybe look at some of my sketches, think about what I want to do, and then I'll do some color blocking in the background with some of my coffee ink, which has actually gotten really, really uh, thick and hard. I showed it yesterday. The bowl looks so messy, please forgive me, but it's gotten so thick that it's barely moving in the bowl. I add water to it and soften it up. You can see some green and gold paint in there because when I was painting yesterday, I was dipping the brush into it, which is fine. I don't mind a little bit of color in there. So I'll do some color blocking with the coffee. And I had also shown the sheen of the coffee on this bee, how just beautiful it looks. Look at that. You can really see it in the camera with the sunlight coming in. So for anybody who thinks they might want to try a painting and this is a style that they would like, um, try it out. Maybe you are better with pencil. Maybe you are better with just putting a little paint on a brush and dabbing out the sketch first. Um, you know, there are so many different methods and I watch a lot of YouTubes and I learn different ideas from people too and I try different ideas. So I'm open to uh, trying some different things too. but. This might start somebody off who maybe wants to paint something that, that they want to paint and maybe try some sketching. So I will show a YouTube tomorrow about what I'm going to do with this bee. I kind of have an idea in my mind what I would like to do with this that maybe is a little bit different from some of the other bee things I've done. So a different color scheme and a different style, but we will see. We will see what happens and have a great day. And I'll also put this on my Jilly's Art Facebook if you wanna take a look at it. It's a business page uh, and then you can look at the progression. I'll do that, I'll take pictures of my art, of, my, um, of what I'm doing and you can see the progression of what I'm doing. And love, love Jilly.